Alright, take two of all this stuff. So I recorded all these things and it didn't go so hot because I don't like to plan anything. Um, so I'm going to do it again. So this is uh, a video that I want to show off dynamic port configurations or like automatic port config or dynamic segmentation or however you want to call it. Um, so the idea is I have a switch, I have uh, it in mist, and um, I want to create a site, create a template, and then say, depending on what gets plugged in, uh, no matter where it gets plugged in, it's going to get a profile and a VLAN and all that cool stuff. Um, so you can see I've got my uh, mist dashboard here. I'll make sure that it's still I'm still logged in because I, I screw around and then it idles out. Okay, and then I've got this wheel of names. You'll see what that that's going to do in a minute. And then because the wheel of names doesn't, uh, it's too hard to put like 47 things in here. Um, I'm going to use this to randomly generate some stuff, and then I've got my own little website. Uh, this website actually is to just show off how easy it is to see what it looks like for a dynamic configuration. All this thing does is uh, uh, consume webhooks from Mist on device events, and then it just reports it out here. So I basically am going to have, um, it'll show the port, co the co like a random color to a port, uh, and then it's going to say the port profile and all that cool stuff. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of better of an idea of what's actually going on behind the scenes after we set the thing up, because it's, it's actually honestly pretty easy. Um, so if we go in here and we do a new site, I've already done one a while back just to make sure that this thing worked, right? But um, let's do, let's create a new site. We're going to name it uh, Andy Building 01. Put it in Texas. And everything else should be good. I want to set the root password for my switches to be missed. One, two, three, four. Don't show anybody this. Uh, hit save. So now we've got our building. Um, there's two different kinds of switch templates. There's a organization switch template and then a site level switch template. Um, I'm going to just do the site one. So you can see in here, here's all my sites and then I can click on this and this is my site template. When I was talking about the organizational template here, um, you can actually inherit those templates into your site. So I use this for um, delivering constant information across your org. So if you've got network access control, NTP servers, DNS servers, DHCP servers, whatever, uh, I would set that up as an organizational level template because everything in my org needs to know that. And then the site can be, you know, particular to this one site. Or again, if you have a, a pretty straightforward network, you can just do the whole organization on a, on a template and be done with it. And in our, in our case, we're going to do none of that. Um, scrolling down, so uh, my lab is a flat network because I'm lazy. So um, I actually want to create a. Uh, in my case, I just want to be. I want them to be dead uh, ports when I want them to be enabled, but I want them to be dead when they're not being used. So I'm going to add a network in here, and I'm going to say dead VLAN. Make it like five because five doesn't go anywhere in my lab. Um, and then port profiles. So I want to create port port profiles. It's a tongue twister uh, based on uh, what I want to, to put on those ports. So I'm going to add a port profile and in the background here I have a um, text file of all my MAC addresses and what I want to go where. Uh, but in our case I've got a uh, cradle point. So I'm going to say cradle point and everything else is default. So if you had more complexity in your network you can select whatever you want in here and, and hit go. Um, Again, I just want this port profile to be delivered dynamically wherever I plug my cradle point into. Um, I've got an access point, but that's already on here, so that's fine. And then I want... I've got virtual machines. Machines. So I've got a... Uh, I've got a... A host that's pushing a bunch of virtual machines out to, you know, random places, whatever. So now we've got our cradle point, we've got our uh, virtual machines, and then I want to also add my dead VLAN because I identified it in the networks, but I didn't actually put it in a port profile. So I'm going to do dead VLAN and then say it's going to be five. And then there you go. So that's all the static stuff. Um, dynamic port configuration, this is where it starts getting fun. Um, so I'm going to add a rule. And there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this, right? So you can do it based on a radius, like a, a network access control or LLDP. In my case, I just want like a Mac OUI. So I'm going to say Mac, and then I'm going to say if the text starts with, I'm going to Alt-Tab here and say access point is this Mac address or this Mac OUI. And then I want to say if you see this Mac OUI, assign this, this template to it. We're going to do it again for our cradle point. Copy, paste, and pick cradle point, hit OK. 
add another one, MAC address. This one's our virtual machine. Let's see where my virtual machine is. Here's that. Okay, go. All right, so we've defined these three things uh, as, as dynamic ports. Um, and then in this uh, switch configuration page, I can add these however many I want, right? I can add a bunch of these. Um, and then I can make different things happen uh, based on their name or whatever. But I, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to use a default one. And I'm going to say port config. I'm going to add a range. And so my range is going to be GE001. No, actually 000. And I want that to be default, not cradle point default. I want default default. So this is my uplink. And I don't really want to mess with that. I don't want to do dynamic anything on my uplink just because who knows, right? Um, so that's good. And then I hit OK on that. And then the rest of it, though, I want to be uh, dynamic. So if I do GE001 to 47, so that's like everything else, I want that to default dead VLAN. So whenever nothing's plugged in or something gets unplugged, I want it to go, I want it to go die somewhere and not, not be connected to anything. This could be different based on your uh, environment, but again, just for the sake of simplicity, I want to just show, you know, it is what it is. And then dynamic uh, configuration. So I hit OK on that. And it kind of goes away. It seems kind of weird that it goes away, but it's right here. So if I click on it again, port, um, where'd it go? I actually should still be here. Hold on. Did I not save it? Oh, let's do it again. So that's zeros all default access. Good. Oh, I think I, I don't think I hit the check mark on this. So we'll do it one more time. G001 to 47. Want it to be dead, dynamic. Okay. And then okay again. There it goes. Okay. So now we have it. So this is our basically our, uh, our config template for our Andy building. So I'm going to hit save on that. And we actually have a uh, switch in here. So here's my switch. I'm going to select that. Bring it over to Andy Building and say I want to manage it with Mist. Hit go. Close this out. Look at my switches. It'll take a little bit to uh, to come to life. So I'm going to pause it here so you don't, you don't have to sit and wait with me. Um, but I'll unpause it as soon as it comes up. Okay, so you guys will probably be able to see this timestamp up in the top right how long it took, um, but I just hit refresh a bunch of times until it worked. So here's my switch. It shows online. I actually want to name it, so I'm going to name it Andy Switch 01. But apart from that, we're seeing um, it's picked up the template, right? So here's our default is 0, 1 to 47 is a dead VLAN, but you can see that it's a enabled dynamic configuration. I don't want to override anything. So you can override all this stuff too if you want to, like locally, just on this one switch or whatever. Uh, but that seems good with me. So I'm going to hit save. You get the prompt. Uh, while this thing is, uh, while the, the name is getting saved, you, uh, the one thing that I wanted to explain is you can actually set this all up in the context of this one switch. So let's say that we've already got a site and an org and all that cool stuff, and you want to try to lab up a, a, you know, a new network access control policy or you want to do this on just one switch, you can set this thing all up on this one switch and then go up here to utilities and hit create templates. So this could be kind of sort of your golden template if you want to you want to call it that. Kind of the idea is the way that we did it was we created a site and then a template and then we're kind of working our way from the top down. But if you want to work your way from the bottom up, you can do that too. Uh, it's it's really pretty easy to do. Uh, let me hit refresh and see if we can see any any ports coming up yet. Again, I'm going to pause it and wait for this thing to start showing our who we have plugged in where, and then um, we'll kind of move on from there. All right, cool. So I just hit refresh a bunch of times. Took uh, a little while for my virtual machine to come up because I realized it was actually turned off. Um, so, But anyway, so you can see we've got on port 38, we've got our access point. 28, we've got our cradle point. 16, we have our HPE server. Um, so I'm actually going to decide I'm going to replug all this stuff in and we'll be able to see what's going on right so um, all this stuff was configured based on that template I didn't really change anything everything still looks the same no smoke and mirrors um, well that looks good now I'm going to put in this wheel of random stuff I'm going to say virtual machines and then do another one somehow add entry uh, all those other ones cradle Point and access point, and then 
Somehow I can spin this. I don't know how to spin this. Not advanced? Okay. How do I spin? Oh, click to spin. Duh. Okay, so we're going to see which one we're going to uh, plug in. So we will re-plug in the cradle point. into port 23 okay so i'm gonna show this screen so you can see the webhook happening um so we said cradle point port 23 okay i gotta get down got bad knees cradle point i just unplugged it into 23 okay did that so you can see that on 28, it was plugged into 28. Now it says that it was assigned dead VLAN. So my webhooks uh, only grab event data, right? So it's only the events. If I had uh, a real API hook into the uh, into the switch, I would be able to see all the all of these are assigned dead VLAN except for zero because we said that that one was just going to be on and that's it. So you can see 23. Was it 23 we were supposed to do? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, 23 is coming up. Um, it's going to take a minute for the cradle point because um, the device that gets plugged in has to actually start up and report its MAC address and depending on what the device is um, it'll uh, yeah so so here's my uh, virtual machines for whatever re reason it said hey here I am um, but the cradle points takes a little bit to boot and then uh, it'll it'll end up coming up up here so uh, let's spin it again virtual machines And we're going to plug our virtual machine into the port 10. So here's my virtual machine. Actually, wait. I keep forgetting that I should show you this screen because this is way cooler to look at. Uh, I unplugged it. So port 10, we said. 10, 11, 10. Okay. And then the access point should go. We'll wait for a minute and see what it says. So there's 10 that went down. I've actually got a problem with my uh, my code that sometimes it'll show the thing is up when it's down. Uh, where did it come from? 16, I think. So yeah, so 16 says dead VLAN. 10 says it's coming up. Um, let me pick a random number for the uh, 45. So 45 is going to be our access point. So let me plug my access point into... 45. Okay. Done unplugging and replugging. But that's the idea, right? Like, uh, we just picked random uh, ports to plug these things into. And you can see via uh, webhook, as real time as it's going to be, um, that's what it was. So, my dead VLAN, sometimes uh, the webhook comes in that says it's offline after. What was it? It was after. There's some, some logic in there that I screwed up that makes the dead VLAN show that it's online, even though it's not. So these things are all coming up. Um, you can close these two windows out now. We don't need those anymore. But I want to show. Let's refresh here. Oh, I already can't remember where we plugged all this stuff into. Um, this could be old, could be new. I can't remember. But um, this takes a, a little bit to uh, update versus the webhooks. But... Uh, Either way, no matter how it works, you can see I can hit Switch Insights and I can see the same information, right? So I'm basically just taking this information as real time as I can possibly get it and delivering it to my little website just as kind of a demo to show off how easy it is that you can unplug things and plug them back in. Like this one just showed that it's a um, the AP just came up and it's saying, hey, I'm an access point on 45. Um, you can actually see the port came up on 45, port went down, so it went down, came back up. You see it all happening, right? You can see that it was assigned this interface profile access point. And this website, I'm actually trying to make so that anybody can use it. So you can set this thing up, put uh, webhooks to this site. It'll create your switch in here, and then you can actually just see, you know, what's going on and how it's doing it. But the idea is I wanted to show a really easy way to, sh to uh, demonstrate um, how easy it can be. Uh, I say easy a million times, and I'm not editing that out in uh, post, <laughs> but... Uh, but I get a lot of feedback from people when I talk about this. Uh, people say, hey, man, I got too much random stuff on my networks and my IDFs that uh, 
I, it's just easier for me to, to assign ports one at a time or change them however I feel like I need to change them. I don't really feel like getting into the templating and the, you know, all the craziness. Um, so I just, I, that's why I do it all manually. But honestly, man, you can, you can set these things up as a bank. You can just do a couple of these are dynamic and then a couple of them, you know, aren't, um, you can mix and match. You can set this thing up to do, um, network access control. I mean, you saw all the, the options that there are. Uh, but it can be as easy as this. And the cool thing about doing like a Mac OUI is it doesn't need access to Mist or the cloud or uh, the internet after it gets that config, right? So if I pl unplug all this stuff from the internet and I plug in an access point to somewhere else, it's still going to have that same uh, security and logic uh, built in to that uh, configuration. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I thought that was cool. Um, I'm actually going to um pause it here for a second and then i'll let this stuff refresh but you'll see in the timestamps i think it's like two minutes or something like that but it's usually because that device is having a hard time coming up right so the access our access points boot crazy fast see there you go um so this thing was up way faster than these other ones but this one cradle point finally came up this device came up and said hey i am this mac address uh what do i do and uh just dynamically it, it came on and said here's here's where you're supposed to go on 23 10 um, again, dead VLANs are, are were assigned. Um, all these are technically set to dead VLAN because that's our default. Um, just ignore this pink one here because I, uh, I screwed up the coloring on this. But, uh, but yeah, you can unplug these and plug them in wherever you want, and they'll still pick up all the um, the same config, and you won't have to worry about it anymore. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.